Hello, welcome to episode 223 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die, from 1994, Through the Olive Trees. Continuing on with the Abbas Kiarostami reviews, this is a film from Iranian filmmaker Abbas Kiarostami that is apparently the third part of a trilogy, although he wasn't fond of it being called a trilogy, but there were three films set in the same area, I think. And this film also, I think contains a scene from the second film in this unofficial trilogy but we see it as it's being made I don't know about that I can't speak to it unfortunately this film was bought by Miramax and was shown I believe at Cannes uh, at some point and then they kind of have held on to it and so this film hasn't had a good release and I had to download a copy which was a shame because the quality was dog shit and I'm used to watching films on Filmstruck or Blu-ray where they look great. So it was a shame to see this film which is completely done in exterior with these nice kind of uh, Iranian countryside landscapes uh, in this kind of potato quality. But I think it really speaks to the quality of the film that I loved it as much as I did uh, considering how bad the quality was. It wasn't terrible but it was, it was certainly lower than DVD quality which was just not ideal for any film uh, unfortunately. But anyway. Through the Olive Trees, is about the making of a film. Uh, the movie opens in a very meta, well not even meta, it's a fourth wall breaking I should say. Uh, I'm just so used to using the word meta and talking about close up, the previous film I talked about from Kiristami, but it's a fourth wall breaking introduction where this man says, hello, I'm the actor who plays the director in this film, <laughs> you know, and then we just enter into the, the fiction of the, of the movie. We have a director who is um, making a movie, it's an area where an earthquake had recently happened, and so he's making this movie in this area in the countryside where a lot of people have, have lost their homes, you know, they've lost their loved ones and so on, uh, houses have been, you know, destroyed and everything, people live in tents, and he's making a film. We don't really know what the broader spectrum of what that film is, unless it is the second film that he made before this. I don't know. The, again, I can't speak to the context of this being the third film in an unofficial trilogy. I'm just judging it based on what I saw in the film, and that alone, basically. And the film centers around this one scene being shot for this movie. And every you know, moving part that goes into that, we follow the director's assistant as she's trying to shepherd in non-professional actors. They find people in the local area to, to play the characters in this film. And they're looking for a female for this, for this one scene. They're looking through all the young girls in the town. And the production assistant, she's going around trying to find, you know, plant pots to use in the scene. And there's boys who run up to her in the car and, yeah, here's some plant pots, you can use them. You know, okay, we'll bring them back at the end of the day. The director's trying to get his shot perfect and, and get the actors right. And they begin the scene. And the young actor starts the scene and he doesn't deliver the rest of his lines. It's like, no, you, you've got to reply to the woman. Okay, let's do it again. You know, we get the clapperboard. The guy goes, yeah, okay, hello, yeah, goes to the top of the stairs, doesn't reply to the, 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 the girl. So why aren't you... Do it again, you know, and I'm just getting so frustrated, you know, as someone who... I can consider myself a, a filmmaker of sorts. I make films, I make videos, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I've, I've done things where I've got people to act in front of a camera. And it was frustrating for me that he kept saying, you have to speak to her. And he didn't do it. And so I was so engrossed in this. And eventually the boy says, I've got a, a, a stammer when I speak to, to girls. And the director's like, oh, all right then, go on, go home, you know. Uh, we gotta, we got to find someone else. So they find another guy. Uh, and he's he's willing to do the scene. He gets to the scene. And the girl won't speak to him. And then we find out that the this new actor has a history with this uh, the actress for the film. And again, these are just basically kids from the local area who've been brought on to do the film. And the, the movie centers around getting this scene done. But also the the internal drama, the real life drama of the actor and the actress who have this history together. And there's a lot of just um, dialogue heavy scenes in the car when they're driving to and from the set and so on from all the different characters. I loved the character of the director. The actor who played him was, was brilliant. I think he was the only professional actor in the film. He was great uh, because he had a real, you know, kind, warm-hearted feel to him. You know, when they're waiting to set up the shot, you know, he goes and talks to the local kids who were there to watch the film being made, and he just chats with them and, you know, quizzes them on kind of trivia and stuff, and just a really nice kind of uh, heartwarming feeling from this guy. And the film has a very humanist um, edge to it, I think. It's really about the human spirit in a lot of ways. Uh, well, you can... 
You can kind of look at it in a couple of different ways, but basically the, the, the real meat of the story is this young actor. Again, he's not an actor, but I, I've forgotten the, the characters' names, you know. Is this, this actor, we'll call him, and the actress, and their kind of personal history. And the actor, he's pursuing this girl, but she won't, you know, she won't basically accept him because her grandmother doesn't agree with it. Because he doesn't have a house. He's one of the people who lost his home in the earthquake, and he doesn't have a steady job. And he's illiterate, so he's, he's, he's not a fit for the daughter. But he kind of has fallen for her. You know, he's, he's seen her and was taken by her beauty, but also she gave him a look. And, he, and he, he's chasing that look, you know, and he wants an answer based on that look. And she won't give him one. She won't speak to him. And so he's pursuing her and he's just getting so down beaten by this and downtrodden, you know, he's just like, and the, the director of the, the film is, is trying to help him with this, you know, he's trying to help him because he wants the scene to work, because these two characters need to talk in the scene, but you can tell that he's also trying to nurture this, uh, not even nurture, but like looking from afar, you know, and he's hoping that it goes well, I, I just, I loved the, the director character, and there's just a, a beautiful moment right near the end of the film, when the, the young boy is pursuing the girl, still, and then out of the, the trees, we see the director walking, and we know that he's been following them, you know, just to see how it's going to go. And it just the fact that he was invested was just so touching to me. But I, I loved the, the fact that the whole movie is about this one scene that they're trying to shoot and get done. And this, <laughs> I could see it really rubbing people the wrong way because it, they, they do it over and over again. And it'll be like a, the littlest thing will mess up. And I'm sitting there on the edge of my seat like, oh my god, they've gone further than they've gone before. Don't mess up, don't mess up. Oh my god, wait, he said the line correctly. They're gonna get, they're gonna finish it, they're gonna finish it. And there's, like, oh wait, no, you didn't say Mr. Hussein. It's like, oh my god, we have to see it all over again. But I liked it as a filmmaker, you know, and kind of almost judging the scenes as well and going, oh, well, he, he, that movement there. I was thinking myself, you know, that movement there wasn't as convincing as the earlier take. So I was almost like <laughs> editing the film in my head. It was really weird. But I love that about it. But I also just love this story and how in between takes, this boy is speaking to this girl and saying like, you know, I, I, I want to marry you. You know, and it's not just because of your good looks. It's because I, I, I want to give you a great life. You know, I, I want to be the kind of husband that does things for you. You know, lets you do things for me, but I, I wouldn't rely on you. You know, I wouldn't order you about. I'd want it to be a, a mutual relationship. I'd want to, you know, do all these things for you. I swore that I'd never work in masonry again, but if, if you would accept me, then I would do it again to build us a house for our future. You know, and he's, he's making all these promises and stuff, and, and, you know, he gets so desperate. He's like, look, if, if you agree to marrying me, just, just turn the page of the book you're reading. You don't have to say anything, you know. And she just sits there. And her hand moves across the book. And you're like, oh, you know, what, what's she going to do? And the whole film's building up to her saying anything to him. She speaks to other people, but she doesn't say anything to him. And this, 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 this female character is, is so elusive to um, the main boy. Hossein, I believe his name was, actually. And I loved how she was elusive to us as well. Because I think in the beginning of the film, we see her in close-up when they're interviewing, well, not interviewing, but they're kind of talking to all the young girls who could be potential um, actors for the film. And they're like, what's your name? Okay, well, we'll speak to you maybe, you know, based on their looks, I suppose, and what they want for the, the part. But once the film kind of gets into the, the, the setup of this scene taking place and everything, we, we move out of seeing her in close-up at all, you know, and most of the time we just see, like, the side of her face, you know, maybe a glance here and there. You know, I, could, I can remember in my mind's eye now exactly what the main boy looks like in his facial features, his expressions, you know, the way he acted. Her, not so much. There's a, there's a coldness, there's a distance there. And it's so appropriate to the, the perspective of this boy who's chasing this girl. Now, as I said, there, there was something um, uh, uh, spirited about the film and spirited about this, this boy who was pursuing this girl, basically. But you could kind of look at it as a really kind of no-no pushy kind of thing where he's just hounding her you know but at the same time she never says you know stop talking to me she never says leave me alone she just says nothing and apparently she gave him a look and that's what he's chasing and he never takes it too far you know he never like you know gets well he gets a little bit pissed off with her but he doesn't you know get aggressive or anything um but you could certainly look at it as a bit of a stalkery movie towards the end but i loved the ending i thought that was uh beautiful and frustrating you know i love that final shot i feel like that's something i'd like to do in a film you know 
So whenever I see something that I go, oh, I wish I'd, I I could have done that in a film, that's something I really like, you know. And they say that you should make films that you'd want to see. So I just, I, I love the ending. There's an ambiguity to it, but not a complete one. It's not one of those like, oh, wait, well, what does that mean? You know, you can kind of, you can see what it meant, you know. But you can kind of twist it if you want. And I, yeah, I just loved the, the aspect of, of following this making of a film uh, in a very unconventional sense because this isn't like a Hollywood production. It's this, you know, they're filming on location in the, you know, Iranian countryside. There's poor people everywhere, you know. They're driving around in trucks. They don't have too much as, in terms of a film crew. But nevertheless, they're making a film in the process of making a film, especially with non-professional actors. So that side of it I loved. But again, the internal drama, the real drama going on behind the scenes, in between the takes. You know, and the fact that she would talk to him, but only in the, the shooting of a movie was it was a, an excellent kind of uh, frustration for the film as well. Because she speaks to him in the film, but not really. It, it's in the film within the film, not in real life. You know, she won't give him the time of day. And you can kind of make up your own mind on why that is, I think, based on the, the things that you learn about the characters. And I thought that the actor who played Hussein, the young boy, was, was brilliant, you know, really natural and... Uh, believable and earnest, you know, this really felt like a, a kind and sensitive person who, you know, just wanted to marry someone and, uh, you know, have someone to take care of, have someone to take care of him and have someone to start a life with, you know, and it's, uh, it's different people in different parts of the world in terms of how you enter into a relationship and uh, how you begin a family. Uh, so, you know, some are conventional to us, some are unconventional, but it depends on where you are and, and where everything comes from and tradition. You know, at one point in the film she won't call him in the movie, Mr. Hossein, and the director gets very frustrated. And Hossein comes to the director and says, well, you know, in, in kind of in, in this point in time with, with people here, they don't call their husbands Mr. anymore. It's kind of a cultural thing in this part of Iran, I guess, or whatever. So there's that side of it too. Anyway, so is it a film you should see before you die? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, it's a cautious. Yes, you know, I, I think I, it will really test the patience of people. It's a it's a slow moving movie, a slow paced movie, uh, and especially when you get to that shooting of the scene, which you know, again, take after take, and sometimes it will be multiple takes, and it's the same mistake over and over again. So it's it doesn't keep it that fresh at times too, and that adds to the realism of it. That adds to the frustration of it. it to me, it gets you into the mind of the director in the, in those scenes. And then once we move outside of the, the repetition of filming each take, we move to the waiting between takes. And then we move to the perspective of the boy as he's trying to convince this girl to marry him. And I think that uh, those two perspectives worked well. Uh, even the perspective of the, the production assistant, the woman, Mrs. Shiva, I think. I, I liked her character a lot, how she was constantly trying to wrangle everyone together and get all the moving parts in play. And, you know, they're considering replacing the actors because they know the the boy and the girl have a history together. But I think the director's trying to see, you know, maybe wait it out and see, see what happens with these two, you know. And as I said, this film is completely done on exterior. It's shot on location and it really has this interesting atmosphere when you're looking at this Iranian countryside and it's overcast for the majority of the film. It's, it's windy, you know. And it reminded me of Willow and Wind in that sense where the whole film is kind of completely coloured in this kind of windy, swishy, kind of overcast autumn feeling to it. And I really liked that. I liked how that played into the uh, just the feel of the movie in general. I think it really helped and was definitely uh, one of my favourite aspects of the film. Yeah, it's a film you should probably check out before you die, I think. I, I really was, was quite taken with it. Um, I think that Close Up is probably a better film, but I think I enjoyed this just that little bit more. So there we go. One more film to talk about from Abbas Kiristami. Loving getting into this director's work and it certainly won't stop with the three films that he has in the book, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die. I want to see more of his films. He passed away unfortunately a year ago um, but there's a whole lifetime of work there for me to delve into and check out at my leisure and I'm very much looking forward to it. So anyway, before I wrap up my thoughts on Kiristami in general, I'm going to get on with the next film and and then film that review and then you'll see that in the next one. So yeah, if you've seen this film, let me know what you think about it. Haven't seen many opinions on this one, I have to say, and especially given its its scarcity, I, I can see why, I guess, but I managed to find it online to download. So um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.